it's been a while but welcome back to another brand new video today as you may know in my last couple of videos i've mentioned the fact that my partner is due to give birth any day now she gave birth to our beautiful little daughter about two weeks ago so that is why i haven't uploaded and also business both my companies have been extremely busy over the black friday cyber monday weekend but going into 2023 expect plenty more content from me towards the end of the year and all of next year but in today's video i'm going to be doing an overview of how my black friday cyber monday weekend went on both of my websites and i'm going to be sharing some tips with you that you can take on board implement into your businesses whether that is e-commerce drop shipping or if you run your own fulfillment side of things these are things that i've mainly implemented this year and they've helped me massively obviously over the black friday cyber monday weekend but these are things that will help you all year round so don't worry even though the bfcm weekend is gone these things will help you grow your business all year round now just here on your screen you'll be able to see a screen recording of my black friday cyber monday weekend you can see on the uk site about forty-one thousand pounds was generated this weekend and on the american site forty eight and a half thousand dollars so we didn't quite hit 100k combined on both sites but these numbers were much much higher than i had ever expected last black friday last year 2021 was good i did about seven thousand pounds on the uk site the us site really didn't do much last year so these numbers i was really really impressed with and these things helped me generate these sort of numbers over this weekend let me know as well down below how your black friday weekends went i'd love to see and just to show you here on the screen recording you can see um again on the usa site this is the bfcm weekend here uh, saturday actually being better Better than Black Friday on the USA site and if we just go on to the UK store here we'll do the 25th to the 28th again Sunday just beating out Black Friday so on both sites Black Friday wasn't even the best day I always get asked about profit margin percentage ad spend was quite high this weekend so it was about a 20 to 25 percent profit margin on both of these sites combined now first up I'm going to be splitting this video into three sections Google Facebook and email marketing first up is Google Ads you know I specialize in that I have my own Google Ads agency so if you are struggling with google ads just hit me up on twitter or instagram i will get back to you if you are interested in me and my team running google ads for you but please make sure we only accept clients who are already running google ads and not people who are unfortunately just starting out because with merchant center suspensions and things it just isn't feasible to do that unfortunately but this year for me you'll know performance max campaigns have been really really good and achieved really good results for me as well as my clients as well it's definitely what we're leaning towards more with clients as well with their e-commerce businesses but anyway i run performance max with a target ROAS set but one thing i did want to touch on and for me is going to be a focus moving into next year especially is just normal search campaigns now i've always ran search campaigns not at high budgets but over the black friday cyber monday weekend they have almost teased me a little bit and are showing promising results so if we just jump over here onto my google account for the usa site again i've gone for the 25th to the 28th of november November, so obviously the BFCM weekend and this particular search campaign I'll break it down in a minute on how I structure it but you can see a 2.1 ROAS I know some of you might not think that's great but for someone who's never really seen much success with search ads at scale this for me all this is showing is a few tweaks a few optimizations this could be running at a high daily ad spend achieving at least a three ROAS and I mean you can see on the Friday here it did achieve 3.3 ROAS with 101 one pound spent then it obviously dropped a bit to 1.782 and obviously on the monday 0.68 for me cyber monday's never been really that good so if you are seeing good results with performance max campaigns a big tip i um, use with this uh, search campaign go into your insights see what search terms are getting conversions with your pmax campaigns and just use those search terms in a search campaign now what i've done here you can see on the campaign settings i have set it at a target rise of 220 percent again that is low so it is almost achieving that target ROAS but as this scales up I'll probably set this around a 300% ROAS so it's not like it's massively underperforming I have told it to get me a 220% ROAS just to gather that data and hopefully I can move forward at scale achieve you know a nice three ROAS with a search campaign and all I've done again like I said I've literally got on the search terms from my insights in Pmax and then 
I have put them into the ad groups for the search campaign. And in terms of ad groups I'm using, I'm doing one ad group per product. So then you can easily analyze, manage your keywords a bit better. And it's just a nice organized way to structure your search campaigns. Now, if you are ever seeing really good results, not just with search campaigns, but this applies for any campaign at all within Google and you're eager to scale, but it's not quite reaching your daily budget. For example, if you're getting a really good ROAS, your budget's let's say $300 a day, but it's only spending around $200 a day and your target ROAS is for example, 400%, then there's no harm in dropping that target ROAS from 400 down to 300% and essentially get your daily ad spend up because you are telling Google to achieve a lower ROAS. If you can then spend double uh, the budget per day, then you are gonna end up making more money. It's as simple as that really. Now, a lot of people panic in regards to what deals and sales they should have on their website through not just Black Friday, Cyber Monday, over Christmas, over the winter, summer, all year round. For me, I don't run any promo discounts in the header bar of my website. I don't run any promo discounts on the slide, uh, the homepage slide. I used to, but believe it or not, and this is through a lot of testing, it doesn't increase my conversion rate if I have a 10, 20% discount in the header. I just have a simple message basically telling people they get free shipping on their orders. And having that there instead of a 10, 20% discount does not affect your conversion rate ultimately means you don't have to give away 10 20 percent of your order value back to customers because they're applying a discount code so it's an easy way to save a bit of money there the only discount i offer is a five or ten percent discount from the email sign up pop-up box that appears after about 20 seconds on my websites so just a little side note there do not start offering people 30 percent discount codes Unless it's in an email campaign, you don't need something like that on your homepage or the header of your website, because trust me, it won't help. You'll end up basically draining that small profit margin you already have, and, and you're just gonna lose it to discount codes. Okay, now that was obviously Google Ads. Just quickly moving on to Facebook. I don't want this video to drag on too long. Feedback score, again, with Facebook is so important. Mine started to dip a bit on my USA site due to slower shipping speeds and a few quality issues I had with some of my products, some of the newer products I was testing. And what I've essentially done to ramp that score back up again so i'm not nearing that penalization of the feedback score of two it's now about three point two i think so we, we are slowly getting there if you've got products that you know are such amazing quality and they arrive in good time obviously certain products can get delivered quicker because they're smaller and things like that just run ads to those on facebook perhaps on a small budget get a few sales here and there and i mean i've done this at scale with a winning product that luckily is obviously amazing quality and arrives in about seven days to the usa so this is essentially what has ramped my feedback score up i wasn't running facebook ads to it but since running Facebook ads to this really good product, again, amazing quality, custom packaging, you know, things like that, my feedback score has gone right back up to around, like I said, three to 3.5. And if I keep running at scale with this product, it should go up to about four to 4.5. So don't wait to make these changes if you're nearing a Facebook, a low Facebook feedback score. Just do this from the beginning so you keep up there with that good score because the lower your score, it seems to be, obviously, the CPMs get higher, so then it is harder to make money, basically. Now, in terms of the Facebook structure I use, drop a comment down below if you want me to make an entire Facebook ads campaign structure video because I can do this in a lot more detail. But just to summarize, I use CBOs only. I have one product per CBO. Again, kind of like with the Google thing, it just allows me to keep things organized. I just like that with my ads managers. I have one broad audience per ad set uh, or ad group ad set, whatever you want to call them. Um, I don't use lookalike audiences because since the iOS update, they're nowhere near is accurate and they still charge you ridiculously high CPMs for lookalike audiences which are nowhere near as good as what they were two three years ago so broad interests you know multi multi millions I'm talking 10 million plus for each broad audience now you might be testing multiple audience interests in one ad set I basically use one interest per ad set and that is so you can easily analyze which interest is performing well if you've got 10 interests in one ad set and it performs bad or good you're not going to know which particular interest is the reason it's performing bad or good pretty self-explanatory and then within each ad set i use one to four ads and that can be a mixture between videos and images and in terms of budget i obviously start quite high between 100 and 200 pounds a day budget and for every 100 pounds budget i have i usually use two to three ad sets you know i don't do the whole five 
five pound or five dollar a day ad set budget because you're never really going to get enough data to make good decisions i like to give these ad sets a good chunk of budget let them run for about a week and then make decisions based off that again it is very low maintenance for me with facebook you know i'll occasionally cycle in new ads if the frequency is getting too high um i kill off ad sets that aren't performing well and obviously the reason they're probably not performing well is the interest within the ad set so i'll just simply turn it off duplicate it just test a new um interest it's as simple as that but if you want a more detailed video perhaps me actually making one do let me know down below and the final thing as well with facebook ads and this applies to instagram obviously as well keep an eye on the comments that you are getting on facebook and instagram on the ads because some people will just post negative comments whether they're true or not it can harm their performance because if someone was going to buy something through this ad and then they see a nasty comment down below it's probably going to put them off from purchasing so just keep an eye on that once a day just check what people are saying okay now finally is email marketing i'll put my screen up here you can see this is the performance of my email campaigns throughout the black friday cyber Monday weekend. Black Friday is difficult, I must admit, for email marketing because people's inboxes, I mean, mine was exactly like it. They are just cluttered and spammed with emails. So you've got to do a decent job at standing out with your subject lines. I actually find the Clavio AI auto generated suggestions can actually be quite good. But um, just to summarize what I basically did. And again, you can apply these all year round. I don't just send a bulk email campaign out to my entire list. You know, I'll send an email to customers who have abandoned cart and not ordered. And, um, you know, more incentive, you know, urgency to get them to actually place their orders. Um, I'll send emails to customers who purchase specific products. So uh, you can, you know, offer them complimentary products that go with the product they've already purchased from you. Again, relevant content is going to increase that conversion rate. You know, rather than sending them a generic sales email with a bunch of random products in. And another thing I like to do is what I like to call email remarketing. Just basically following up with people who have opened an email. You can make your engaged email list. So I have an email list which is basically people who have opened an email in the last 30 days. You know, people just call that their engaged list. But for this weekend, I did a separate engaged list for people who opened an email in the last 70 two hours so basically anyone who's opened emails over the black friday weekend i then send them other emails that is why the open rates on these are so high these emails here you can see the open rates are still pretty decent for the weekend but this is when i started to send emails only to the engaged email lists and you can see 81 percent open rates is just absolutely bonkers and then 60 percent here this was actually the cyber monday email i just sent to engage 30 days you can see the results i got 1500 dollars back from this campaign zero from this which was actually a product specific campaign surprised i didn't get a single sale actually but anyway 800 dollars here 700 and let me just switch over to the uk clavio account just so you can see how they did okay now on to the uk account open rates slightly lower i always seem to find that with uk i'm not really sure why but the lower open rates are usually the emails sent to like abandoned checkouts and signups and things like that and this one here was i accidentally clicked the smart sending thing so no one really received that i mean you can see five people receive that um anyway so you can see the results here we've got 500 pounds from this campaign 360 600 700 you know again really high open rates for the top ones here because they are sent to the engaged email list so i guess the point of this particular part of the video do not neglect your engaged email subscribers you can make um like i said custom lists so that it's not just 30 day engaged you can do 24 hour engaged you know 48 72 things like that if you've got like a summer sale or a christmas sale this is a great email list to send these things to as well and again all year round just send relevant content within your emails to relevant people don't just be lazy and bulk send you know i've done it I'm sure you've done it as well and i'm sure you know the results are not very good if you're just bulk emailing random sales to people so segment your lists send relevant content and you will see better results so that has been my overview of my black friday cyber monday weekend like i said at the start drop a comment down below let me know how you did i'll leave my twitter and instagram down below as well if you want to drop me a follow on there that'll be really appreciated smash a like button as well it really does help the channel out and yeah if you guys have got any other video suggestions feel free to drop a comment down below as well but other than that thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next video